She has spent five iconic decades building an entertainment career as a singer, actress, talk show host, and author. Marie Osmond is here, and she's teaching us her secrets to reinventing your life and finding happiness after age 50. Marie, I love having you with us. Thanks for joining me. I love you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> very, very well. I love that red. Now, you just li oh, listed off. You. Well, you know, it's the holidays. you got to be festive. That's what I was thinking. So I just listed off a ton of your accomplishments, but I'm very proud to say that you believe becoming a mom and a grandma is actually the biggest of them all. Congrats, by the way, on your eighth grandchild, Olive. Uh, <laughs> yes. which, which, by the way, but people don't know this, but your first name is Olive and your mother's name namesake as well. So how important was you that the name live on? Well, first of all, uh, I didn't think the Donnie and Olive show would make it. So, <laughs> no, <I'm, laughs> um, I actually am called Olive by my close friends. Um, but I, I've always gone, you know, by Marie. But, um, to, you know, I didn't ask my children to name them Olive. I, I don't think you get involved in that with your children's lives. No. You let them do what they want. But it's interesting because uh, my children have chosen more traditional names like my boys I have four boys uh, and four girls of my own and I have four grandsons and four granddaughters and the but the boys are all like you know Stephen and Christian and 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 Maxwell and uh, and then my other daughter named her children very you know like Olive and then I have a Maud and a Mabel and then I have one daughter and it's Rocket and Wolf <laughs> and so it's really fun to see your children's personalities come through with uh, with how they name their children, it's fun. But it is an honor, and I know uh, my mother would be very pleased as well. Oh, Isn't she's she beautiful? so <laughs> cute, so beautiful. All of she's such a cutie. Now you traveled the world for a majority of your career, and you've recently begun traveling back down memory lane. The last time you were on the show, I have to remind everybody, you shared your journey back to your childhood home. There it is. It's, oh, yeah. And since then, you actually made a visit to the house that your mother was born in, in Idaho. So what was that experience like? Well, do you know what? It's so interesting. Um, by the way, I went and that tree that I planted in Huntsville, I started, you know how they, you count the rings to see how old you are? I stopped. I, don't, <laughs> I won't do that anymore. But, um, it, you know, I think roots are very important. I think family's important. That home is now like a, a, a site, a historical site. And I had never been there. When they dedicated it, it was actually the week my son passed away and I didn't want to be in the public. Mm. Yeah. And so my husband... Uh, we have we like to travel around got our motor home and uh, went there to see it and it was so fun because as I walked around the grounds Oz it was really cool because I saw where stories I had been told of her childhood oh that happened here and this happened there and she was born there and it was just it was really fun it's nice to return to that and it's nice to have those stories to pass on to children right. it's a it's a blessing that they have restored it for me you know for sure but I tell you the, the the, the real surprise for me, and I've been, you know, you've been in the spotlight since you were three years of age, and I've been interviewing many child stars, and they have shared their fair share of struggles. What's remarkable to me is how you made it out to the other side so well adjusted with such good memories. Oh. <laughs> You're so cute. Um, how do you know that I'm well adjusted? No. <laughs> <laughs> because I've gotten to know you pretty well. I and mean, people around you <laughs> like you. I mean, you're, it is, a, it is a, a, a remarkably healthy life that you've crafted for yourself, emotionally healthy. That's so sweet. Uh, I've told this story before. Uh, I think it's worth repeating, but I remember when I was about 16 and our, our, the Donnie and Marie variety show was dubbed into 17 languages worldwide. So it was, it was kind of like, not, not to sound weird or anything, but I was kind of like the Taylor Swift of that generation. Yep, right. Yep. And so I remember coming home and we worked hard. Don't get me wrong. I worked, you know, 16, 17 hour days. And, um, I came home and I, it was exhausting we had two and a half days to learn 350 pages of script dancing and everything. And I said, mom, I'm going to bed. I need to look good. It's, we're taping tomorrow. And she said, Hey, wait a minute. You haven't done your chores. <laughs> and I said, mother, like, you know, I'm Marie Osmond. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen her face. It was the worst thing I could have ever said. And she, she goes, Oh really? Okay. Well now you're cleaning the toilets. <laughs> and if you give me any more lip, I have more choice because you're going to learn that that's a job and this is reality. And you're going to see that all these people want to take care of you and entitle you. And you're going to have to learn that reality is taking care of yourself and being responsible, <laughs> responsible to your family and learning chores. And so really that, that was, it, it's like self-esteem cannot be handed to you. You can't buy it. You have to earn it through hard work. And those are the things that she put into me. And I think 
those were great values because you cannot be a child and raise children. Also, my eight children uh, really helped me uh, so much going through their struggles in life. It really helped me hone in on those things in my life that maybe weren't quite whole yet. Yep. And um, and being a parent, it's, it's a very humbling experience and one that I have treasured more than anything in my life. You know, your entire family was involved in show business. Even though your mom made you clean toilets, there they are. <laughs> And we, we keep her, keep Marie humble. And, you know, we saw how that could tear some families apart. I mean, Britney Spears and her family are strange, for, for example. It's, you know, it's hard to manage all that success when uh, you've got, you know, different people pulling in and needing from you. Any advice to people who enter into the business, any business with their family? Run. Run? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, my heart goes out to her. It's an example of people wanting to facilitate and take care of you, and then they end up controlling. And, um, you know, that's that's the gratitude I have to my parents was, no, know who you are. I know, for example, I lost, when we lost all of our money, uh, I remember being a single mom and, and uh, didn't know what to, went back to work. But I went down to a place called Limited Express, I think it was, and I bought something on sale and I was sewing on my own beads and I thought isn't it interesting I went from Bob Mackey's to doing my own sewing but I learned how to do that because of my parents and so as long as you know how to work and know how to work hard uh, and learn to take care of yourself uh, you can survive anything in this business and that's what I would tell people is learn along the way appreciate everybody along the way you it is not about you it's about everybody around that makes you look good and uh, and to appreciate them you know and and to really make sure um, you know that that you that you really know who you are and have good support system how do you deal with the fights I'm sure with eight brothers you, you know they weren't always babying you around <laughs> Uh, no, and I didn't baby them either. No, <laughs> <laughs> we we were all raised to be, um, you know, just respectful of each other. When you work with your family, it's one of those things that you have to. Uh, it's a choice, and it doesn't matter if it's show business or if it's a plumbing business. Uh, you you have to decide if something goes south, is it going to ruin your relationship? Because maybe with some people, uh, family members, it might, and others, it may not. So uh, I think you have to be ethical with your family, and that's one thing we've all tried to be. Uh, the, the philosophy of it's easier to get forgiveness than permission is not a good thing. Uh, you want to make sure that you always are ethical and upfront with family, more than anybody else, because family is more important than anything else. All right, we're not done. Coming up, Marie's second family, her fans are here, and Marie was sharing all her secrets to finding happiness and being fabulous over 50, including a beauty trick she learned from the iconic Marilyn Monroe. You're back with Marie Osmond, whose iconic career has no signs of slowing down. So you are recently quoted as saying, age shouldn't define you, especially as a woman. And today, we're going to have you share some of your best tips to help some of your fans reinvent themselves and find happiness after 50. But first, <laughs> this is a question that I'm sort of... At 50, you went through this big reinvention, this rekindling. You started dating your ex-husband. Then you got remarried. Right. What right. did you know at 50 that you didn't know the first time around? Well, I would. That's an interesting question. I would say and maybe you would agree with this, but little things just don't bother you as much. You just realize some of those things aren't. For example, um, my husband loves to go to bed with the house clean, especially the, the dishes. And that was not a big deal to me. And I think there's a little bit of, because um, I, I would get up in the morning and do them. So what's the big deal? You know, I want to get to bed. But now, for me, it's it's a joy to just make sure that kitchen's clean for him. It, it's it's the self, it's the selflessness that's more important than the selfishness. I mean, that's a silly example, but it's an example. But um, I just know myself better. I know. Um, what I appreciate about him. And I think anybody who's going through that, it's important. My other philosophy is I love him. He says, happy wife, happy life. I think that's a good one. Yeah. And and the other, <laughs> the other thing is that divorce is so expensive. And so I think it's more important to say, happy spouse, keep the house. That's my <laughs> new philosophy. <laughs> All right. So we brought in your second family. That's what you call your fans with some questions on reinventing themselves after 50. The first question comes from Jackie. Take a look. Hey, Marie. You know, I am really astounded by how great you look for your age. And I'm ready for a change myself. So can you please share your skincare secret with us? 
Now, you, you've, t you've told me in the past you work with so many amazing makeup artists through the years, and you found some great tricks. There's one with lipstick in particular. Well, um, you know, it's interesting. It's a, it's a, yeah, I know, I know lots of tricks. I mean, one of them that I think is really good for not aging. Do you want to know it or yes? Should I show you? Please. So, um, so I worked with an artist who knew the artist of Marilyn Monroe, and one of the things he said is that women tend to uh, overline their lip, like like the bottom lip. They'll go clear out here and follow their line. Yeah. You don't want to do that. You want to take your lip and flip it up on the corner. And then make sure, see, I didn't do it today. And you want to do it so that it gives you a smile. And if you ever make your bottom lip bigger, you want it to tuck under the upper lip. And that's youth. And the other thing you do for youth for, is you just make sure you highlight your bow. You can do it with Botox if you want, but I just do it with color. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is, you know what I think is the best beauty secret? Is beauty shows from inside. Laugh. You know, and you know me, Oz. I mean, you and I, we... Laughing is the best beauty that you could do. Retin-A is also good in drinking lots of water. <laughs> Retin-A, I love it. All right, one more question from Shelly. Take it away. Hi, Marie. Um, like you, I am a recent empty nester, and I'm trying to find different ways to treat myself now that I'm not busy chasing kids around all day. Um, do you have any advice for that? <laughs> you know what? It's, it's true, though. Empty, and being an empty nester is another another dec every decade there's an adjustment right and i'm now an empty nester but one of the things that i believe is this is your now your time you you have all this wonderful uh investment with you with your family and your children and and your passions mm -hmm. and things like that but now you get to pursue your passions go back to school uh take up look mm -hmm. like me i i uh I take up hobbies, you know, I, I design dolls, I do all kinds of things. I, um, I have a new album coming out, I'm singing a completely different way. Uh, just take the time, you know, put yourself out there and don't be afraid. Uh, fear is the enemy of everything that's joy. And if you're afraid to fail, you've already failed because uh, you haven't tried it. And so, um, you know, just tr go back to school. I just, I love education in every topic that you find interesting. So it's a great way to figure out who you are at this stage of the game. And it's actually kind of fun. Is that interesting? Very, I don't know. <laughs> very interesting. I never thought about going back to school. So that's very an interesting concept. So thank you for You're sharing. You're so cute. So I've known her thank forever. You. My fans are the best. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I call them my fan friends. And Vegas was so much fun for 11 years because I got to know them and would talk to them. And Shelly's a doll. We have a star in Vegas on the Walk of Fame because of her and, and her friend. And uh, the fans did that for us. That's how incredible. Not, not that one particular, but the one in Vegas, there's a Donnie and Marie star. But we have that was bought by our fans, too. <laughs> our, usually people buy their own stars. Our fans buy our stars. It's amazing. Up next, Marie puts us in the holiday spirit. Stay tuned. You're back with Marie Osmond, whose iconic career has no signs of slowing down. You have a new holiday movie that came out this season called A Fiancé for Christmas. Take a look. Will you be my fake fiancé? Yes, I will. Sweetie! <laughs> I'm going to be a grandma. <laughs> Amanda Payton, Adam Gregory, and Marie Osmond star in A Fiancé for Christmas. Premieres Thursday, December 9th. Part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime. You can catch Fiancé for Christmas playing on the Lifetime channel this Christmas season. Marie also just released a 17-track holiday album just in time for the holidays. It's called Unexpected. So why'd you choose the name Unexpected? You know, I did it because of people like Shelly. Uh, I never would be here.